If you ever wondered how the thread cutters work on some of these machines. So if you see this black bar here, what you'll see is it moves. So when the servo motor is fired, what happens is that pushes that along there. Okay, very simple mechanism there. So it's zinc. Now what's happening in tandem with that is this part here. So I'll move this again. What you can see is that little silver thing there moves into the middle. Okay, you see that? But you also see on the other side a little hook thing here, right there. What that does is that connects into the bobbin case. Okay. So the hook on the other side, the little hook, that one there, hooks into the bobbin case. Very much almost like chain stitching. And then this has a little tiny hook. I'll see if I can show you the little, little tiny hook on the bottom. So that thing that comes up the middle. Let's see if I can show you this up close. I'm not sure if you can see. There's a little hook. I'll move it a little back. There you go. You can see that tiny little hook there on the bottom of that. What happens is the needle comes down and the hook catches that thread, pulls it around the bobbin case, but because this then gets pushed into the middle, what happens is that hook on this hook on this thing that don't know all the fancy names here, but that little hook catches the threads and pulls it back onto the knife blade, which is right here. Let's see if I can show you the little knife blade. See this little thing here is a knife blade, so it pulls the thread back over that. But I could never figure out, so you can see it's pulling it back, and then it chops it when it gets to that point there. So you can see the little blade popping up, bloop, bloop, so that's how it chops it there. But I was wondering what what's catching and holding the thread, and that's from the other side. So what happens is as the threads it spin around because it hooks through the needle, it catches it there, it pulls it there, but it jams it against this side of the bobbin case so it can't go anywhere, and that's how it holds it tight. And then you get tension, which you need to cut the thread. So that's kind of funky doodles. Um, the reason I'm in here is mine hasn't been working 100%. I've just changed the blade, but it wasn't always catching, which was less of an issue than the blade. Um, and I couldn't figure out why. And what I realized is, I think in one of my previous moments, I hadn't actually put this little metal bit into this trough here. So I think that was why it wasn't 100% hooking on this side of the bobbin case and therefore it wasn't getting any tension it wasn't always cutting the thread so I'm hoping this time I've adjusted it right it is a beast to get in here lots of clips and screws and everything else and this whole bit here adjusts which is where I got it working but without the needle plate but <laughs> when I put the needle plate on I realized this was out of sync so the needle was actually hitting the plate so there's quite a lot of funky adjustments in here, which is why you should always take these things to a technician, but this isn't really an option at the moment since everywhere is shut. Anyway, I shall do this from the front once I put some thread on, and then you can see if it's hooking right. And now this part is quite complicated to achieve, but what happens is, you can see here we've got this part that moves back and forth, okay, so the thread will be picked up by the hook, just like there, and then in time with that, this is then brought forward. And what you'll see is, and it's probably going to be very difficult to do here, the thread will be brought around, okay, 
right? And then this will come around the hook just like it's doing now and it's going to pop into and hopefully I'll take this off the tripod now one sec hopefully you can see now the thread is hooked oops just there it's a I should use white thread but it's just on that hook okay see the hook it's got the thread and then what happens is this other hook here under there, right? I'm hoping it's picked up the thread. We'll have grabbed the thread, and you can see it's stretching the thread out. Hopefully, it'll focus. Stretching the thread out there. See, so it's got the thread, and they're both hooked. Now it's going to pull it across the blade and chop. So that's where it does the chopping. It didn't chop it then, but. You know, I am trying to force this to work. Okay. Need to <laughs> have a few extra hands here. Um, let's see if I can wrap this thread on something. It needs to be held taut. Um, in order for the chop bit to work. Oops. Um, okay, I'll put it back on the tripod for the chop bit. We bring the thread round again and hook it under. Hopefully we can get a bit of a chop this time. It's hooked again. Pulling it back. Chop. So it worked that time. Okay, so you get the idea of how that works. Pretty neat, pretty simple. Um so it's all very fancy. It's amazing how that reminds you of the chain stitch parts on such as Maya Singer 411G and whatnot. Clever. Okay, well, I'm going to try and put this back together now. Bye for now.